Ladies and gentlemen, it is now my distinct pleasure to introduce the Superintendent of the United States Air Force Academy, Lieutenant General J.B. Silveria. Thank you, Mary. Well, good morning. Welcome to NCLS 2020. And for those of you, it's the first time at the Air Force Academy. Welcome to the United States Air Force Academy. Welcome to Colorado. I'm Lieutenant General Jay Silveria, and I am the superintendent here of the Air Force Academy. Uh, for some of you that have never been here, that means that I'm the president of this institution. And it's truly an honor for me to be here. I have to tell you, first off, that the NCLS is a very powerful symposium. And I can tell that because we managed somehow to separate ourselves between snowstorms. So uh, <laughs> a special thanks to a shout out to Colorado for allowing us to have this symposium between snowstorms. So welcome, welcome to all. Let me start with a thank you. Let me start with a thank you to all of the people that put this together. It's a remarkable effort to put together this kind of an event that's going to take place over these two days. And you should know that next week we will begin planning for the uh, symposium of 2021. It takes that much time and that much effort and energy to put together this kind of an event. So thanks to all the people that did that. It also takes that much time and effort for us to put together this kind of a lineup of speakers. You heard some of the cadets and, uh, and staff talk about that we're going to be exposed to business leaders, general officers, secretary of defense, people from different countries, uh, business leaders, as I mentioned, but the ones that are motivational speakers that come from all sorts of, of fields of study and all sorts of businesses across our country. And it takes a lot of work to put that kind of a lineup uh, together. And that lineup is what leads us to our theme of valuing human conditions, valuing cultures and societies. And that value, to value the human conditions, to value those different cultures, is vital to our success here at the Air Force Academy and vital to our success as an Air Force. That's why we do this. It's so easy to look at us in a military uniform, that we all look the same. Most of our haircuts are the same. Some of the cadets perhaps need to, need to get there. <laughs> our uniforms are the same. We move in unison. We march together. We fly in formation together. But the truth is, in so many other ways, we are not similar. And the theme that you should get from me for these two days is that we do not all come from the same place. In so many areas of our human condition, we do not all come from the same place. And you're going to see that over these two days. That we all come from different backgrounds, different experiences. Outwardly, we can see gender and race and skin color. But the truth is, what really matters is the diversity of background, the diversity of experience, and ultimately, the diversity of thought. And last spring, I had a very poignant reminder uh, that was brought to me uh, at our ring dance. So every May, our junior class receives their class rings, which is what's uh, on my ring finger here on my right hand. I'm a 1985 graduate. It's a very proud moment for cadets to receive their ring. It means they've completed three years. It means they're about to be a senior at the United States Air Force Academy. It means they're very close to becoming a graduate of this institution and a second lieutenant about to serve in the United States Air Force. And it's the, one of the things that they will take with them clearly for that many years. And so it's a bit of a custom during the, during the event where people will come up and they're, everybody's showing each other their rings and they're holding their rings and everybody puts, puts their hands next to each other and takes pictures. And so as I'm around, cadets all want to take their picture, you know, with their ring next to my ring, and they're, they're holding them up next to each other. So pictures are going on, pictures are going on, and this cadet puts his fist up, sir, I got to get a picture, and he has his new class ring, and it's shiny, uh, and it, uh, it looks very spiffy. Mine's a little worn out at this point. But next to it, on his other finger, is another ring that looks kind of like a class ring, but not near as fancy. And... Uh, I asked him, what is that ring? He said, sir, that's my high school class ring. And maybe I had a reaction. Okay, three years in college, 
He's still wearing his high school ring. Maybe I had some kind of a reaction. And he looked at me and he said, sir, I'm the first person in my family to graduate from high school. So when you think about the background and you think about the experiences and you think about the diversity that he brings to the conversation, that kind of experience, that's what makes us stronger. And that's so vital to what we're doing at the United States Air Force Academy. It weaves a fabric across this institution and it weaves a fabric across the United States Air Force. Ultimately, you expect of your United States Air Force to take on an enemy and to win when we fight wars. And we cannot win when we fight wars when we all look like each other and when we all come from those same backgrounds and from those same experiences. We win wars when we build teams that have those diverse backgrounds and those diverse experiences and those diverse perspectives. And I'll give you a firsthand account of that from a combat situation that I was in. So prior to this role, I was the Deputy Air Component Commander responsible for the Air Operations Center that was controlling and running all of the air assets and the air war in the Middle East from Afghanistan to Egypt, Syria, Iraq, down into the uh, Arabian Peninsula. And so there was one night that we had been working on a significant operation that we'd been planning for months where we were going to infiltrate a number of special operators into a terrorist camp. They were going to attack this camp, but the ultimate goal was to seize some terrorists that were getting together for a meeting and also to gather as much intelligence as we could. But it was in not a very friendly place. We expected a, low, a terrorist camp that was nearby to react to this and to attack the force that we were putting in there. This is a scene right out of the movies in so many ways. This is fighters, bombers, remotely piloted aircraft. There's cyber involved. There's space involved. There's special operators that are going to jump out of airplanes that are going to have to walk into this site. There's special operators that are moving via ground. All of it is, is intense synchronization. We've been planning for months. About two days before we start the last bit of the process, there's about 48 hours where we're leading into this event. All of the forces are assembling. Some of them are starting to move. 24 hours before, it's the middle of the night. Something about our operations always are in the middle of the night. So it's the middle of the night, 24 hours before, and we are assembling to do the last checks. We have a room full of people in a conference room, a lot of special operators. We have video teleconference. We've got about 30 different locations that are on. There's people all working. You can see there's general officers, a lot of senior officers, people bringing in papers, and they're all reviewing stuff. The slides are going through. Everybody's talking about the, the operations. Everybody's giving through a check uh, of where they're at, and we get to the intelligence point. We're going to review the intelligence before we move on to the next 50 things that we were worrying about. We get to the point where we're going to review the intelligence. And as part of that, we had to establish the triggers of whether they had been met to start the operation. Those had been well coordinated. Everybody knew the triggers. So the senior intelligence officer stands up and says, you know, sir, and he gives a bit of an overview. And he says, but I'm going to let the captain, who's been closest to this material, review the triggers. So a young captain stands up, happens to be a small woman, happens to be Hispanic, happens to be a, a United States Air Force Academy graduate, by the way. She stands up, perhaps she's a little nervous. She starts to run through the triggers. Sir, this one's been met, this one has not. This one has not, this one has not, this one's been met. This one has not been met. She gives her analysis, in a very flat tone, and she sits down. Right before she sits down, she says, based on that, it's my assessment that we've not met enough triggers that we cannot execute this operation, and sits down. And a lot like this room, that room and the VTC go entirely silent. They all look up, they all wait, I think about four seconds, and then they all start talking at once. Everybody starts talking at once, but all they're talking about is that they want to challenge her. Wait a minute, we've already started this operation. We've already started moving this. We've already started that. 
and they start to ask her very hard, difficult questions. She stands up, she answers the questions, and she sits back down. The reason I point out that she sits back down is that uh, perhaps it's a millennial thing. You know, she stood up there, it's like, okay, you asked my question, I answered it, I sat down. Uh, she went through this a few times. There's emotion, there's quite a bit of anger. These are operators that have planned this operation for months. They're on the brink, they've got some forces moving, and this young captain that didn't look like them was not part of their group, not part of their organization, told them that they were not to execute. So that story is about the diversity of perspective and the diversity of background. But that story is also about the senior officers in that room who allowed that different perspective because the decision was made at that point that we are not going. And the reason that I know that that was right, because two nights later that when we actually executed the operation, when that captain stood up that, the night before that and said all of these triggers had been met, two nights later we executed the operation to remarkable success. No one was hurt. No equipment was damaged. No aircraft no, was damaged at all. We managed to get the terrorists we were looking for, all of the uh, intelligence we were looking for, and not one member of the coalition of that team was, was hurt in any way. So that story is about how we come from a different place. The story is about allowing that talent to come forward. The story is about her moral courage, but the story is about allowing those different perspectives. And that's what NCLS is about. As I said in the beginning, we don't all come here from a diff we all come here from a different place. And we all come at so many things from a different place. So I'd offer that if you look around for the speakers that you're going to have over the next two days, find the speaker that you've already decided you disagree with. And challenge yourself. Challenge yourself. You need to find the speaker that you are uncomfortable with. You need to find a place that you, perhaps it's a view you have never heard. Perhaps it's a perspective that, like I said, you already disagree with. Because that challenge to yourself is ultimately the essence of education. That's ultimately the essence of growth and the growth mindset that we endeavor to push forward at the United States Air Force Academy. Please enjoy your next two days, and I look forward to meeting most of you. Thank you very much.